I'm going live in Facebook. So this is going to be a challenge. I've got, okay, I've got my text there and I've got this here. Good, here I go. The next, create live video event. People can respond to your event. Your live video will be available and we'll, we'll remind you about your event. I'll go live now by myself. Go live later. Let the video for webcam. Streaming software setup tips. Add graphics to your live video. No. Display video comments. No. Okay. Select the video sources webcam. Aha, allow access to camera. So does that mean I have to turn my Zoom camera off? Aha, okay. So if I want to go um, live stream from my video, from my Zoom meeting, I've got to do it differently, right? Okay, so we'll, we try again. Allow camera, what is it? Get, get out of that. Unable to find camera or microphone. Okay, and then stop that. Cancel. And we'll go from the from the Zoom meeting. Okay, I'm recording all this. So whether I post the whole thing on YouTube or, or edit this first bit out, I'm planning to go live. And this is learning by doing. I wanted to actually go live into my group, learning by doing, and I couldn't find a live button on the learning by doing group. So I'm in my Zoom account. I'm already recording. And I click on the three dots of more. And I'm going live on Facebook. I've got the option of live on workplace by Facebook. I don't know what that is or live on YouTube. So I'll go live on Facebook and hope that I can still find all the things that I want. Better check my folders first. Okay, the other folders aren't even open. So uh, Okay, so I'm going to open my folder first and it's going to be the, the Bubby House House folder. Okay. All right. Aha. And that means I won't see what's going on on Facebook. All right. Okay. Okay. So I've got two screens and I've got the text that I want to read on, on the, on my left screen and on the picture I see it's going to my, when I say left and it's going to the right what you look at. And I've got a folder of photos that I want to share, which I was going to put on my right screen, which you see to your left. And I also want to see what's going on to Facebook. So this is going to be interesting. I'm putting the folder of photos on my right screen. And I've got my text on the left screen. And I only want to show the folder photos. So, yeah, like I said, learning by doing. Okay, so I'm going to go live on Facebook. Wish me luck. See you there. So I'm going live on Facebook, connected to Lily, Lily's meeting room, the meeting description, hometown reminiscing. Choose where to post on your timeline, on your page, to your group. Now my group is learning by doing, and the group that I want is uh, learning by doing. So is it going to show me that? Is it giving me that option? It says no options found. But that is my group. So maybe it's my page. I, had, I went through this yesterday already. To my page and I want learning by doing search no no matches found so again i haven't got the option to post to my page 
So I'm going to just um, go to my timeline again. So that's how I did it yesterday. Who should see this public or my group members? So I don't see that option as well. Good. So who should see this? Oh, that's taking a lot of room here. So I'm going live now. That's my Zoom camera. Okay. That's the photo that I want there. This is my Facebook. So I'm going live now. This meeting is being live streamed. Got it. Hello, everybody. Now it tells me this meeting is already live streaming on Facebook. So I'm still learning by doing, figuring out how this all works. And I guess pretty soon I'll see myself on Facebook and I'll have to turn the sound down. So what I wanted to do, I'm doing a reflection, continuing what I started yesterday. And it's not going to be a half hour like yesterday. So I might be talking a bit fast to get condense that I've planned to be around 10 minutes. So I'm going to share my screen and it's going to be screen one, this one, screen one, share and I want these photos and I want to share these photos with a full screen and that's about as big as it's going to get on this setting. So I'm talking to you today now about Holly, the house on Holt Street. It's my reflections on a lifetime of memories at Holt Street, 36 Holt Street idea, phase one, because I'm planning to do this for a few days in April. As I look back, reminisce, appreciate and mourn, a western suburbs home of Melbourne, Australia. My parents emigrated to Australia in 1951. Now it is too late to ask them to tell their story. I'm so grateful that I took the time to ask them while they were still here. Now I'm in that last generation. I'm feeling compelled to tell my story. Yet now I'm so far away. I have moved back to Europe. My mother was the last to go of the previous generation. Dad left us in 2004. His sister Lida, who was much younger, died one year later in Prague. I went to her funeral as the Czech Republic had just joined the European Union and I didn't need a visa. I felt like I was representing my whole family from Australia, even though I had only travelled from Austria. I thought of my dad, who had left a few days before I arrived to see him in Australia, just before his 77th birthday, which he never saw. We never know how long we've got. Mum lived to be 93 and a half years old. We thought she could live to be 100, but she was in pain and she could hardly walk. She wanted to stay living at home and was always telling us how grateful she was to be living in the house that Dad built and she loved her garden. I've filmed her in the kitchen. Now I've got so many hours of film which I want to share. But maybe it really is still too early. Nobody wants to watch all those hours of footage. I check what I've filmed and find, yes indeed, she did tell us more about her home in Brno. So I've just uploaded a YouTube video. This photo taken just a couple of days before her passing shows her loving the great grandson presented to her by her only granddaughter. She had a fruitful life. Five children, 13 grandchildren, and six great-grandchildren during her 93 years. Holly, the house in Holt Street. When Dad first came to Australia in 1951, 
His brother Vince was already here. He helped him find a cabin, which we called a bungalow, to put on the block of land he had found. Dad says he put a deposit on the deposit of £10 and secured the block. He quickly set up some rainwater drums because we had no running water or electricity in those days. Mum arrived by ship about five months after Dad. Ron came two years before me and I was the only girl. You can see the wooden fence behind us here. I think I mentioned that yesterday. Mum spent lots of time with us outside because there was hardly any inside. On this photo, you can see a corner of the house. Here, this, this is the neighbours and this is the corner of the house that Dad was building. I guess this could also be our first apple tree in the background. At one stage, I counted 20 of them. And here, I'm sitting in front of the bungalow. Dad made lots of furniture from the wooden packing boxes, which brought the machines to the factory where he worked. He made this baby high chair, which doubled as a table and chair. And here in front of the house, as Dad was building, Mum must have spent a lot of time outside. No wonder she loved the garden. And here's the bungalow again. My godparents came to visit. The visitors always brought presents. Here it's an Easter egg with an egg cup and a plastic spoon. The front of the house shook, took shape. We kept growing, so did the family. Uncle Vince came with his new wife, Judy, and when we moved into the first room of the house, they took over the bungalow. You can see the first room behind their car. This is the front of the house. On this picture, you can see the foundations of the second half of the house. Here, Dad's building the brick foundation where the living room and kitchen and dining room were built. And you can see we even had electricity. See here, the light pole, electricity pole. Here, Uncle Vince is helping dad to build the house. We had two rooms and the bathroom which also served as a kitchen. This must be in 1957 when our younger brother Gary was born. The rotary clothesline was already a standard feature in the backyard. Here you see again the foundations of the dining room with Gary in the pram. On this photo, you see the front bedroom and the foundations of the rest of the house on the left. And you can see the bungalow in the back in the first half of the house. We already had a wooden rocking horse and you can see the cat. This is mum and dad in what became their bedroom. First it was the living room. You can see the built-in wardrobes that Dad made. My godfather had a motorcycle and he worked nearby. He was also a cobbler. Friends of the family came to visit, so there's a photo on the front porch. Now I wish I knew where we were going. I already mentioned the electric box here. My first communion. And this must be the baptism of George. Look, the grapevine growing down. Mum with Gary, Eric and George. The car on the lawn. Grandma came to visit from Prague. Dad had built the two extra rooms at the back of the house by then. The aloe vera flowering in the front of the house. They've put an awning above the bedroom window. 
that's got hydroponics growing in the courtyard. The front porch is all green. I returned from Europe nostalgically 10 years after my parents' 50th wedding anniversary. Mum's using a walker, but is still very much alive. The church, just two doors down, plays a major part in our lives and the company's mum all the way. I nostalgically filmed the garden, which I miss so much. There's, there's a video posted to this. I, I think I still need to upload it. You can see the Norfolk pine behind the house over the roof. It's in the back corner of the yard and it's grown gigantic. And now there are even trees on the nature strip. Every time I go back home, I know this may be the last time. Mum walks to the church with her walker. Hello, number 36. Take a good look. And another. And another, the rockery, the letterbox, and from the other side, and now what you can buy in four weeks time, Holly the house in Holt Street, an empty shelf, farewell.